All right, welcome back everybody. This is our video solution to problem three from quiz two, spring 2023, math 302 at Cal State Fullerton. In this problem, we are given a set S and we're assuming there are two equivalence relations denoted E1 and E2 on the set S. And we wanna prove that the intersection of those two equivalence relations is again an equivalence relation. Now, it may not be obvious what I mean by the intersection of two equivalence relations, but this goes back to the definition. So we defined an equivalence relation as a relation, which means it's a subset of the Cartesian product satisfying the reflexivity, symmetry, and transitivity axioms. So E1 is a subset though of this Cartesian product. And similarly, E2 is a subset of this Cartesian product. So I have two subsets of a set, so it makes complete sense to intersect those sets. Okay? And that's what we mean by the intersection of E1 and E2. I literally mean the set intersection of those two equivalence relations. So of course, if I intersect two subsets, it's again a subset. The question is, will it still satisfy the three equivalence relation axioms, namely reflexivity, symmetry, and transitivity. So we're gonna check them one at a time. All right, so for reflexivity, we're gonna let S be some element of S. We need to show that S comma S is in the intersection equivalence relation. Well, we know because E1 and E2 are both equivalence relations, they both are reflexive. So that implies that S comma S is in E1 and it's also in E2. But if it's in both sets, then it's in their intersection. Oops, there we go. Okay, so we get reflexivity. All right, how about symmetry? Well, for symmetry, we're gonna let S and T be in the set S such that S comma T is in the intersection. And now we need to show that T comma S is in the intersection. Okay, but since S comma T is in the intersection, this implies that it's in E1 and it's in E2, all right? Thus S comma T is in E1 and S comma T is in E2. But now E1 is an equivalence relation, so it is symmetric. So we're gonna use the symmetry of E1, and that tells us that T comma S is in E1. And similarly, since ST is in E2 and E2 is an equivalence relation, it's symmetric. And so we know that T comma S is in E2. But if TS is in both E1 and E2, this implies that TS is in the intersection. All right, finally, transitivity. Well, here we're gonna let S, T, and U be an S, and we're going to assume that S comma T and T comma U are in E1 intersect E2. And we need to show now that S comma U is in E1 intersect E2. Okay, but the argument's gonna work the same. All right, thus, when we know that S comma T and T comma U are both in E1. If they're in the intersection, then they're in E1. And also S comma T and T comma U are in E2. But now by the transitivity of E1, we know that S comma U is in E1. And by the transitivity of E2, we know that S comma U is in E2. But if S comma U is in both E1 and E2, then this implies that S comma U is in the intersection. And that's it. We've verified reflexivity, symmetry, and transitivity, and thus E1 intersect E2 is an equivalence relation. So that's the end of our proof. All right, and that's the end of quiz two. We will see you next time.